Hey guys, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Final Fantasy Bestiary. This series is dedicated to discovering the history and lore of Final Fantasy's most iconic creatures and characters. This episode, we will be focusing on the interdimensional dragon, Shinryu. Remember, we will be covering this character's influence across many Final Fantasy titles, therefore, there may be some spoilers. Shinryu is a recurring enemy in the Final Fantasy series who most often appears as a super boss in the games. While he may not be as frequently recurring as the ever-popular weapons bosses such as Omega and Ultima, he is still one of the strongest foes of the series. His name is how the Japanese refer to Shenlong, the Chinese spirit dragon. In his mythos, he is the master of storms and bringer of rain. He is one of the many dragons that controls the elements essential for agricultural life, and the Chinese made sure to never disrespect these dragons out of fear for poor crop conditions such as flooding or drought. In Final Fantasy, Shinryu is a dragon made of crystals. As stated at the start, he is also capable of interdimensional travel, having an association with the Void, his home. Strangely enough, he is found in treasure chests in some of the older Final Fantasy titles, suggesting that he either hid himself in there or that treasure chests in the Final Fantasy series have some sort of odd connection to the Void itself. When disturbed, he unleashes overwhelming power that can easily topple unsuspecting and unprepared players. However, if defeated, he commonly rewards some of the most powerful items in the game, including the weapon, the Ragnarok. Since Shinryu is most associated with the Void and the Interdimensional Rift, it is no surprise his first ever appearance was in Final Fantasy V, hidden away in a treasure chest. While most monster-in-a-box enemies in classic Final Fantasy games are usually more dangerous than common enemies, Shinryu is actually a super boss equal to Omega in strength, which can completely decimate the player. In the Game Boy Advance version, there's an even stronger version of him called Neo Shinryu, who, while he only has 10k more HP than his initial counterpart, possesses far higher stats, including strength, defense, and resistance. He would not appear again until Final Fantasy IX, where he would instead be known as the Nova Dragon in the English version, though he was still Shinryu in the Japanese version. He is actually the leader of an army of dragons in this game and must be defeated to enter the final area of the game. This was likely an allusion to his Final Fantasy V counterpart, who rested within the final dungeon of the game. Shinryu would appear in the immediate next title Square Enix released, Final Fantasy X, though his role returned to that of a super boss. Final Fantasy X was home to a monster arena where enemies could be captured and fought. If you caught enough of a certain type of enemy, bosses would open up with unique strengths and item drops. Shinryu was unlocked here by capturing every underwater enemy in Mount Gagazette twice. He has 2 million health and must be fought underwater, similar to the Evray fight earlier in the game, whose model he actually shares in this title. This leaves the party with only Waka, Riku, and Tidus to fight, and Shinryu can petrify and eliminate party members from this fight very quickly. It would be a long time before we saw Shinryu again in a new Final Fantasy game, but that doesn't mean he didn't start making appearances in old remakes. Shinryu became a super boss in the many remakes of Final Fantasy 1. He appears in an optional dungeon, the Lifespring Grotto, and is one of the hardest bosses in the game alongside Omega. Shinryu was also introduced into the sequel of Final Fantasy IV, which was called The After Years. He resides in the depths of the True Moon and is only known as Shinryu in the Japanese version. In the English version, he was again renamed, this time to Lord Dragon. In the Complete Collection release, he was even renamed again to Nova Dragon for some reason. Regardless of name though, he does drop the Ragnarok after being defeated. Now before that appearance in the After Years, Shinryu actually had a pretty long hiatus from Final Fantasy titles of 5 years. It's even longer if you don't include him being placed in the remix of Final Fantasy 1. But his next forward appearance in the Numbered series, and his final appearance in the Numbered series games thus far, would occur in Final Fantasy 11. Shinryu was the final boss of the Heroes of Abyssi add-on scenario, and the entire Abyssi series as a whole. Abyssi is an alternate dimension, and in that dimension, the player's alter ego failed to defeat Promethea. Promethea absorbed the darkness of Sethlius and transformed into a monstrous Wyrm, Shinryu. While Bahamut may be the Wyrm King, Shinryu became the Wyrm God, and as such possesses immense powers. While fighting this boss traditionally upon his release could be quite difficult, use of the quote-unquote brewing technique can make this fight a complete joke since it raises all of your stats to the maximum for several minutes while in an abyssy area. His drops include the Twilight set, only has insane stats, but has an auto re-raise 3 effect if you have them both on. Basically, 
making it so the player wearing them will never stay dead unless they decide to. It's also interesting that he is in another dimension. Again, I've spoken about Gilgamesh, who is another Traveler of the Void, who is heavily associated with the Abyssi expansions as well. I believe it's not just coincidence that both Shinryu and Gilgamesh are heavily involved in this interdimensional expansion pack. Now, Shinryu did appear in a number of other Final Fantasy titles, including Final Fantasy Dissidia and Dissidia Duodecim. He makes a deal with Sid of the Lufane, the overseer of the never-ending conflict, to gain strength. He eventually creates a post-apocalyptic conflict and sides with Chaos and Feral Chaos, granting him strength and making it so that only the enemy Chaos can use him as a summon. He evolves into Shinryu Varus and leaves for the Void upon Feral Chaos's defeat. Shinryu has also appeared in a number of other Final Fantasy titles other than Dissidia, most of them small ones like the card game, Theatrhythm, and All the Bravest. He even appeared in the spiritual successor to the Four Heroes of Light, Bravely Default, where he is an important boss, as well as appearing in Type-0 in the form of a Lassie. More and more, we see Shinryu could make for an interesting boss down the lines, as a giant, powerful dragon who wouldn't want him to appear in more Final Fantasy games. I don't know about you guys, but I love fighting me some dragons. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy videos. Be sure to check out the rest of the Best Jerry series on my channel if you haven't already. Of course, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter where you can ask me questions, get regular updates about when I'm posting videos like this one. And of course, follow me on Twitch where I am currently doing a Final Fantasy streamathon for the month of February. Right now, I am streaming Lightning Returns since it just came out here in the United States. But anyway guys, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.